Um, thank you all for coming to my talk today. My name is Zachary Howard. Today, today I'm going to be presenting my undergraduate capstone pr uh, project where I simulated ferromagnetic domains on a hexagonal house. Um, so the motivation for my project was that we wanted to create magnetic domains that look something like this because um, they're used in hard drives and so we wanted to be able to simulate them so we could better understand how they work. Um, I'm just going to get this. Um, so we wanted to create something that looked like this. So I'm first going to talk to you about the model we used and how the Hamiltonian we built off the model. Um, I'm then going to show you the first simulations we got working, which are uh, demagnetized state domain patterns. Um, and then how we moved from the single patterns to hysteresis loops and the analysis we did on those. And then um, some first order reversal curves um, that we looked at and excursions outside of the hysteresis loops. Um, so the model we chose to use is a five-fourth model. A uh, five-fourth model, the basic form can be seen here where the quartic term is a scalar variable phi, uh, phi representing magnetization, minus a quadratic term. Um, this gives us a double well potential where um, we can fix, minimize, plus and minus one if we make the coefficient on the quadratic term equal to two times the coefficient on the uh, quartic term. Uh, this gives us six minimum plus and minus one, which corresponds to spin up or spin down having preferred values. Um, so from this five-fourth uh, term, we added other terms such as an applied field term so that we can make hysteresis loops a random field term to break up uh, symmetries and account for impurities and samples. And um, lastly, and most importantly, a interaction potential. Um, the interaction potential we use is the RKKY potential. It has the forms of the, it has the form of a decaying oscillation or decaying cosine. Um, so the goal was to minimize energy on an iterative basis. Uh, so the applied field is minimized when it has the same direction as the lattice that we're looking at. Uh, same with the random field. And the, uh, the interaction potential is minimized when the two lattice sites we're considering um, have the same sign and tend to be cosine. Um, so the parameters we're going to tweak here uh, to see what kind of things we can simulate were um, variable A, uh, K is the interaction potential, and the, how strong the random field is. So the random field is also proportional to the disorder of um, so these are the demagnetized state patterns we made. Um, these are the most interesting values. You can see as we start at k equals 0.5, we have these weird amoeba-like things kind of crawling around in there. Um, and as we increase it to 1.0, we get a nice, beautiful labyrinthy domain. Um, as we increase further, uh, we get very ordered, uh, very tightly packed uh, lines. Um, and the tool we use to analyze these is the Fourier transform you seen below here. Uh, the Fourier transforms quickly tell us a lot of information about um, our domain patterns, where um, the, the radius of the circle we get um, tells us the average uh, domain spacing between uh, same colored lines, so they're inversely proportional to the average domain spacing. And the thickness of this ring is um, is uh, inversely proportional to the correlation length. So how far do you have to go before um, the domain lines start going in different directions? Um, and you can see here that this ring has a strong bias to this point and this point, um, which indicates there's a bias in the domain. So once we got um, these demagnetized patterns working, we move up to creating hysteresis loops and um, exploring what kind of parameter, what the varying the parameters did uh, to our uh, loop uh, morphology. So uh, starting with this graph up here, uh, we varied k from uh, starting value 0.8 to 1.2. And you can see for uh, smaller values of 0.8, we have a very hard loop um, with a ton of area enclosed. Um, and as we increased it, we went through this, uh, it goes to a more hybrid morphology where it has um, harder ends and then a softer middle. Um, this is a shape we're interested in because for later analysis on uh, first order reversal curves, we want a shape that looks like this. Um, and as we increase k further, it uh, started to smooth out and increasing it even further causes uh, 
get to it. Um, looking at uh, uh, variant sigma here, this is variant that random to occur. Um, again, starting at smaller values, we have hardware loops where it quickly um, changes and then slowly goes um, to saturation. Um, and increasing uh, sigma further causes us to move from harder loops again to uh, softer loops. But um, it changed in a much different way than K did. So tweaking these uh, together allowed us to fine tune what kind of loop we wanted. Um, our last parameter here, A, being kind of merely as draft, drastic of an effect on the loop morphology. Um, small values of A, um, increasing a from small values to large values, just push the nucleation points um, further away from zero point here. Um, so one thing we looked at um, by looking at the Fourier transforms was uh, we would pick a magnetization on our hysteresis loop, and as we varied this order over a long range, um, we saw how the uh, domain spacing and the correlation length were affected. Um, so this was, uh, these are some experimental results. From uh, perhaps the computer simulation at the end. Um, these are some experimental results, and these are what our simulation looked at. So they follow the same general trend, which was uh, something exciting um, that we saw. Um, so we were contacted by uh, Dr. Stephen Caban, um, who is doing work on looking for hidden rotational symmetries in uh, domain patterns. And um, so what he does is he he takes the I believe these are magnetic X-ray scatterings, and rotates them and sees if um, sees if uh, they repeat at all. And this is for different uh, rotation angles here. Um, so he asked us for uh, data from our simulation because he wanted to see if we had rotational symmetries in our data. So he gave us this hysteresis loop right here and wanted us to replicate it. Um, so this is the replica we made right here. Um, I think it looks pretty good, so we need to send him this data now so he can perform his analysis on it. Um, and this graph right here was for A equals 0.8, K equals 1.1, sigma equals 1.8. And I actually have, so the video before was of that hysteresis loop running. Um, and so I'm now going to explain it as it goes. So we start off here where the black saturation, all the domains are pointing one way. Um, the white cells start popping up. You get a lot of little white cells. The, they then turn into long lines. Um, all of these lines then start getting bigger and bigger and bigger until they then start going away. Um, or no, they keep getting bigger until black cells show up and then it goes to the white saturation. Um, so an important idea from that is that the white cells um, Um, so we wanted to then use our simulation to look at the first order reversal curves I talked about before. And that basically means that while we're doing, while we're running our hysteresis loop, we start going up one way, we go all the way to saturation, then we go, we start going back the other way, but about halfway through we turn around. And if we have the right morphology, we can actually go outside of our main hysteresis loop, which is a weird effect that um, was seen experiments recently and that we can replicate. Um, this is some experimental uh, description. So our main idea for this kind of a, um, event happening was that um, it had to do with how many cells there were present in the domain versus how many domain lines there are. Because if you have all these long lines versus a lot of short cells, the short cells have more surface area, so it might require more energy to flip them, which would um, cause you to go outside of the loop because it's less energy to take the flip. So, um, we created a program that would go through our domain lines and trace it, or go through our domain patterns and trace out all the lines and all the cells. You can see here all the blue is attached. Um, we have a periodic boundary, so if it goes off the left end, it goes up over here on the right. Um, our program also did that um, during that time. So uh, this, uh, this is a count of the number of cells versus different points on the hysteresis loop. And as you can see, um, uh, this is the reversal right here. Um, it has, there's more cells um, indicating that in this region here, it actually went outside the loop. Um, the P 
future, we're going to investigate power law we saw in the domain spacing, um, uh, do further analysis on the disorder, and we're going to look for instead of a 